Hello, in today's video I'll be re-editing an old video on this Chrysler Town and Country with a definite misfire. I thought I could improve on it and provide a lot more information than I did on my original video. Not sure how well a misfire comes out on video, but if you go based on a squeaking exhaust, it'll give you a good idea of how shaky the engine is. So when I connect the scanner to the vehicle's computer, it has a cylinder 4 misfire detected code, which tells us specifically which cylinder we want to focus our attention on and makes it a lot easier to locate the misfire. So with that in mind, we want to locate cylinder 4. On some vehicles like inline 4 cylinders, it's pretty easy to find which cylinder is which, but on some 6 or 8 cylinder vehicles, they can be a little more difficult. Although some vehicles will be labeled in some way like this one, it has the numbers on the ignition coils and all we gotta do is follow the wire. Or if you notice the numbers also printed on the wire itself, making it even easier. Or you can always google search the cylinder location for your vehicle and skip all this too. So the first thing we want to do is remove the spark plug to give us a little more insight to what could be causing the misfire, which the spark plug can usually tell us what's wrong just by inspecting it. But I'll explain how later in the video, for now we'll focus on a test that can help find problems that could cause misfires. Upon removing the spark plug, we notice the spark plug is definitely worn and would possibly cause a random misfire, but still wouldn't cause a continuous misfire. So the first test I'm going to run is a compression test. I run this test to make sure that everything inside the engine is good. A cylinder with no compression would definitely have a problem inside, so anything else we test would be useless. So we want to start with the inside first. The first two pictures on the top right would be reasons why we'd have no compression in the cylinder. The first one being a burnt valve and the second one being detonation. Well, the last two being a broken valve spring or a bad head gasket, which would give us slow compression. So anyways, this compression tester, all it does is thread into the spark plug hole and you tighten it as much as you can by hand. And then all you gotta do is crank it for a few seconds. I usually do between three and five seconds. Normally you wanna see numbers above 90. Anything below would be a potential problem. But I always recommend checking one across it to give you a general idea of the reading you're looking for. In which in this case we're getting really good readings telling us that the inside is good. Now that we verified our internals are good, I like to test the ignition system using a spark tester. With this simple test we can check the entire vehicle's ignition system. We can verify our ignition coil or spark plug wire. The computer signal is all working properly. And if you do get spark like I am on this one, we verify that all that is good. But if you don't, then you'll want to check the components in the ignition system. So say you don't get spark, then you'll want to try swapping spark plug wires to check if the misfire changes to say cylinder 3 which would be the ones I swapped. Or you can also test your spark plug wires instead of swapping them, and for this all you'll need is a no meter set to 20k. And to show you how to test them, I got a good spark plug wire and a bad spark plug wire here. So you can see the difference in the reading. Well, let's start by checking this bad spark plug wire. As you can see, this wire has a tear in the insulator, which was causing it to arc and must also have a break inside. So to check these spark plug wires, all we gotta do is grab the terminals of the meter, making sure that we got it on ohms, and we wanna connect the pin to the metal connector inside the wire. And we repeat with the other end. Not sure if you can see it inside the boot, but you wanna make sure it's touching the metal part of the wire. If not, it'll give you a false reading. But as you can see, we're getting an open reading on this wire, meaning that there's a break inside this wire, making this wire bad. So now let's continue on to the wire, which should still be good. The resistance on this wire will depend on the length of it and the type of wire. 
When testing, you want to make sure that you got good contact with the metal connection. But based on the readings I'm getting here, it's a good wire. And you'll also want to flex the wire to make sure that it doesn't lose connections with movements. If you happen to have individual coils like I do here, you can try swapping coils with the one next to it and see if the misfire switches cylinders. It's a good way to verify the coil is bad and not the signal to the coil that is bad. Next I like to test the injector signal using these noise lights. They help you verify that the computer is sending signal to the injector and that the wiring to the injector isn't bad either. This set happens to have types that work on many different types of injectors. So to perform this test all you gotta do is disconnect the injector connector and slide in one of these lights. Now all we gotta do is crank or start the car and make sure that it flashes verifying that the computer is sending signal for the injector to pulsate. And if it operates like it does here we can verify there's no problem with the signal part of the computer or the wiring. But in cases like this town and country we gotta remove the upper plenum to get to the injectors and the wiring. Starting with removing the upper air box and any hoses and loosening any clamps attached to it. Disconnecting the throttle body linkage and the bracket. Using an 8mm socket to remove the two bolts. followed by the EGR tube bolts using the same 8mm socket. followed by these connectors attached to the throttle body and the plenum. And then the hoses attached to it also. These connectors do have a red lock clip that will keep the connector from disconnecting. So you want to slide them back or to the side depending on the design. And again we continue disconnecting any hoses attached to the back of the plenum. As you can see I already removed the two bolts holding the power steering reservoir which will also have a nut under it that you'll want to loosen to slide it out of the way. Now that we got all that disconnected and out of the way we can loosen and remove the 8 or so plenum bolts using a 10mm socket if I remember correctly. Once we remove those bolts and slide off the plenum, we have access to the injectors and the wiring. But first we'll want to disconnect the ignition coils connector so it doesn't try to start while we're running these tests. We'll start first with the light to verify that we got signal from the computer and that the wiring is okay. 
Now we can test the injector itself using the meter set on the ohm setting of either 2000 or the 200 setting. The most common injector readings will fall between 10 and 20 ohms. And all you're doing is touching one lead to one terminal and the other lead to the other. Now let's go ahead and test the one on the Chrysler Town & Country. The first time I check it I have it on the 20k setting, which I shouldn't have had it so high, but I drop it to the 2000 which gives us a better reading. which this reading tells us that we have a good injector. When I did swap location of the spark plug, the misfire did change to cylinder 3, which confirmed the spark plug was the reason. So as promised earlier, how do spark plugs help us figure out what's wrong? Well here I have a spark plug that I removed from a vehicle that had a misfire caused by a bad ignition coil. As you can see the unburned fuel left on the spark plug tells us that it most likely had an ignition problem or maybe a leaky injector. And of course we got the really worn out spark plugs and also the really dry spark plugs when you take them out that could indicate a lack of fuel going into the cylinder, meaning either an injector issue or a fuel issue. And this one we got here you may be familiar with if you've seen my older videos, where it's burning oil and that can also cause misfires as it did in that video. Then we got plugs with carbon that may be getting too much fuel, which can be caused by a leaky injector and can make the spark plug look like this. Upon checking the spark plug later, I did notice that the insulator was cracked and that was the reason for the misfire. And the insulator is this ceramic white portion on the spark plug. Another thing I noticed was this wire had signs where the spark was arcing out, causing a misfire. After that, the van was running perfectly fine and no more codes. While I hope you found this video much improved and more helpful than the original, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.